Welcome to the Interaxis channel and Interaxis.io. Today we're going to talk about the fact that Visa recently settled some payments using a cryptocurrency USDC and, and what that really means. But first, we want to remind you if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe. We're glad you're here. Follow us on Twitter at Interaxis8. And also, we have an academy. Uh, a, a new academy that teaches you all about cryptocurrency, blockchain, the technology behind it. It'll help uh, help you get started with investing. It'll help you if you're already an investor. Talk about security, safety, how to how to judge values of tokens and such. So please go check that out. Interaxisacademy.com. Now back to Visa and and their recent settlement payment in USDC. And here's what we want to explain what happened. But most importantly, of course, we want to explain why it's important for you and what we we see in the future after this move, why it's so important, what else is going on kind of in the, the crypto payment settlements world. So what happened that, that's so uh, revolutionary that, that people, of course, in the crypto world are so excited about is just one small little thing, one, one small little change. So what happened was Visa allowed one of their partners, Crypto.com, to actually settle settle up with Visa in USDC. USDC, of course, US dollar coin, which is a cryptocurrency that, that is backed one for one with a dollar. Every USDC, every US dollar coin has a dollar to back it up. It's a partnership between Circle and Coinbase um, that, that created USDC. So Visa allowed Crypto.com to settle using USDC. And to do that, uh, Visa also partnered with Anchorage. And Anchorage was the first crypto custodian to get a federal charter. Okay, so they're federally chartered crypto custodian. They, they um, are close to being a bank uh, from, from the federal perspective. So Visa is using Anchorage as a custodian and Crypto.com was allowed to settle in USDC. What does all that mean? Uh, that's what we really have to get down to. Why is that any different than anything else that happens right now uh, normally? So what happens normally, what would happen normally is if even if I had, say, a crypto.com debit card, right, which means that I might have my uh, wallet, my crypto wallet, in which I hold, you know, maybe I hold ETH, maybe I hold USDC, maybe I hold Bitcoin, okay, sitting in my wallet. And I might have a crypto.com uh, debit card. And when I go use this debit card anywhere, it, it, it's on top of Visa. When I use this debit card on the Visa rail, so I go to the coffee shop and I buy my coffee. And I choose to use this debit card. The coffee shop gets dollars. Okay, They want dollars. They don't want to transact right now in cryptocurrency. Crypto.com takes the money out of my account. But when they settle through the, the Visa rails, Crypto.com has to be the ones that convert my, we'll call it my USDC, into dollars. So it's at their expense to convert this into dollars to then go through the Visa rails to pay the coffee shop, right? Now, of course, this is happening where it's crypto.com, uh, their, their bank, right? So it's going into dollars into their bank over the Visa rails to the coffee shop's bank over here, which is actually what's happening. This is called settlement. This could happen. Th this could be cryptocurrency being settled. This could be other fiat currencies being settled, right? This could be euros to dollars, right? That's why if I go to another country and I use my Visa card there, that it, it's really easy for me. If I go to, to Europe and I pay 50 euros for something, I can hand them my Visa card and the, whatever restaurant, whatever store that I'm going to, they get paid in euros. Behind the scenes, what settlement is, is from my bank or from Visa or, or from the bank that I'm using for the card, pay, they have to convert dollars or whatever into euros in the background, that's what settlement is, and then pay that coffee shop there in Europe or pay that store there in Europe in euros. That all has to happen in the background. So what was, so, it, for a, a while, for actually for the entirety of crypto's existence, there wasn't the ability to settle in crypto. Crypto.com, in this case, was having to sell their sell my USDC or my ETH or my Bitcoin for dollars 
to send it through the Visa rails to, to buy my cup of coffee. Well, that kind of gets expensive. And quite honestly, it goes against the whole reason that cryptocurrencies were created. It goes against the whole reason we have DeFi, because you're actually increasing the fees and increasing the friction instead of decreasing, which is what we really want. But they kept on going. So here's what happened that's, that's really so important and, and why this is relatively revolutionary is now what's happening is Visa is saying, okay, crypto.com, if you want to settle this, we'll let you send us straight USDC. Now, they didn't choose any other, crypto, uh, any other cryptos. They chose USDC for the time being because it's back one form with the dollar. They haven't had any regulatory issues, anything like that. So crypto.com was able to settle up with Visa so that I could potentially pay this, uh, this bill and Visa will then probably have to take on converting USDC to dollars for the time being to, to, for me to pay a bill. But this is a big deal, okay? Because it means that Visa now at Anchorage, which we talked about, basically has, in this case, a, a wallet that can hold USDC. So crypto.com was able to send USDC to the Visa wallet housed at Anchorage, which is now a federally chartered custodian blessed by the federal government essentially they're able crypto.com was able to send usdc directly to the visa wallet custodied at anchorage to settle this transaction this is a really big deal okay this means that this didn't have to go over the traditional banking rails this can happen that here's why this is important this can happen 24 7 365 just like crypto does, okay? We, we can settle these up. This doesn't have to wait for banking hours. This is an eight to five Monday through Friday, okay? This can happen all the time. What it also means is crypto.com or anyone else who, who's you know a crypto wallet partnered up with Visa doesn't have to go out of their way to convert from, from crypto to uh, dollars. Okay, they don't have to go through the on and off ramps, which also somewhat go through the banking system. They can go directly from crypto to fiat. Now, for the time being, the Visa has done this so that any, com any kind of crypto, DeFi, digital asset related companies don't have to convert. And you might be saying, well, what's the big deal? How many crypto companies are there? Why is that such a big deal? It's such a big deal because maybe there are more and more companies that actually want to hold assets in cryptocurrency. And I'm not just talking about the ones that want to hold their, you know, their entire treasury or a huge portion of their treasury in Bitcoin. I'm talking about the ones that maybe want to, that maybe have a bunch of cash sitting around and maybe they want to hold, you know, a hundred thousand, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars in USDC because through the DeFi rails, maybe they can get six, seven, eight percent interest on their USDC in in DeFi. And yes, it's not insured and all those things, but maybe they want to start holding USDC. Maybe they want to start holding some crypto assets, not because of the volatility, not because they're trying to speculate, but because they can get higher interest rates. And now, if they can do that and use it for for payments over the visa system, that is a really big deal to be able to settle. And settlement is such a big deal. Settlement time is such a big deal. This is virtually instant settlement. This means when crypto.com or whatever company this is goes to basically pay the bill to settle up with visa. In this case, they can do it virtually instantaneously, right? As long as it takes for an Ethereum transaction and there's finality. We know that it happened. Crypto.com knows that it happened. Visa knows that it happened. It happened on chain. It's transparent. Everyone can see it. It's also a big deal that they actually chose to do it on a public blockchain. They didn't build their own private blockchain to do this, which would have gone completely against the ethos of cryptocurrency and DeFi. If, if Visa would have said, we built our own chain, they said, no, no, we're going to go over the public rails. This is a really big deal for so many other reasons because it means now businesses, again, might be able to ho start holding more crypto, hold USDC and maybe get some higher interest rates. And you might go, they're speculating, there's technical risks, what have you. But if they're willing to take on some of those risks, if they're willing to hold some USDC because they get higher, higher returns, maybe more and more of them will do it. Maybe it'll take away a lot of the risk. Maybe it'll take away a lot of the volatility because if these companies were having to sell Every time I made a transaction using my crypto.com debit card, if they were having to sell some crypto, that adds to the volatility. If they're selling at a time when crypto is going down, and I don't even care, I don't even know that, I just want to buy my coffee, 
then they're adding to the volatility. But if they don't have to do that, they're not adding to that volatility. That is also a really big deal. What it, what it, also, what it means, again, we, we, we keep going down these ro roads, is that it's not that far-fetched that now it might go from crypto.com over the Visa rails that are already there in USDC straight to the coffee shop who might also want to hold USDC sometimes instead of holding dollars. Why might they want to do that? The same reasons. Maybe they can get a higher interest rate. Maybe they can go transact a different way. Maybe, just maybe, they start paying salary using this. Okay, so now what we have is the ultimate on-ramp, ultimate off-ramp situation again, where I can have money sitting in my crypto wallet, right? And it doesn't have to be anything very speculative or, or anything. It can just be USDC, and I can just be having it there because I want to earn 8% using DeFi. Okay, that it's as simple as that. I can earn 8% right now using, using various DeFi protocol, lending protocols, and I would rather do that than put it in the bank and earn virtually nothing. I feel comfortable with the technology. I use my crypto.com debit card to pay for something. Crypto.com settles up with Visa, their, their Visa wallet at Anchorage, or their USDC wallet at Anchorage in USDC, who then settles up with the coffee shop, who then starts paying people in USDC, and the cycle continues. This is actually the, the this is what cryptocurrency, this is what, this, what Satoshi Nakamoto, the framers of Bitcoin, were trying to do to begin with, was have this, this global financial system, this medium of exchange slash store value that, that could happen worldwide. This is where this is going. Okay, so now what we have is the ability for people to actually, you know, this is, this is farther down the road, but get paid more in something like USDC, but they can feel more comfortable with it because they can then go pay their bills. This can be instant. Okay, if you're working for, for someone who, who has USDC on their books and they feel okay having USDC on their books because they can pay their bills with it, they might pay you in USDC. Well, what happens at that point if you have a wallet here that, that with a crypto.com debit card and you get paid your salary in USDC? Again, instant settlement. You have that money in your account right away and you can go spend it right away. And if you're, if, if you're a person that money comes in and you have to immediately start paying rent and you have to immediately start buying groceries and food and such, and you can't do that using traditional payment rails, you can't do that using traditional finance because there's T plus two or T plus three settlement, which means when you get a check and you go deposit it in the bank, it might be three or four days before you see it, which means if you start spending money already, you're going to have insufficient fund fees. This partially eliminates that. That is why this is so exciting. It was such a small little thing, right? They let crypto.com settle a little bit of USDC directly with Visa, but it was such a big thing. It, it was a small step, big step moment. Okay, now, MasterCard is working on something like this as well. PayPal bought Curve, which is a, a crypto custodian, crypto custody technology. So they're probably trying to go this same direction. This is not very far off. What it also means from an investing perspective, if you're an advisor, if you're someone who's looking to invest, is there are other ways now, there might be other on off ramps, right? Working might be your on and off ramp. Okay, I can use my, my crypto.com debit card now maybe to pay someone on, you know, via Upwork or something in, in USDC and maybe they'll get that directly. And now they, they already have cryptocurrency. They don't have to worry about exchanges and on-off ramps and such. They might already have it. They can already participate in DeFi. They can already start spending that money. That's why this is pretty revolutionary and that's why, why this is important to look at. Now, the other thing that, that Visa did mention in their press release about this is they're partially testing this also because they want to get ready for central bank digital currencies. And of course, central bank digital currencies means that uh, basically as, a po as opposed to USDC, they want to get ready to be able to process central bank digital currency transactions. Now, CBDCs, this is basically if the US issued the dollar but did so digitally, right? So all my dollars are now, are now digital. They're, they all use blockchain technology. They all use wallets that I might have on my phone or, or hard wallet or something. So what Visa is saying is we're getting prepared so that we can have an account, you know, it's something like Anchorage. We can have a wallet that hosts the, the US CBDC and I can have my, you know, some sort of bank account 
or a wallet that holds my CBDC, my central bank digital currency that maybe the government issued me my stimulus check via, you, via their, their CBDC, their central bank digital currency directly to my wallet, I can start paying things over the Visa rails using my US dollar that is denoted digitally. Okay, and we don't have to go over the old banking rails anymore. That's part of the reason why Visa did this too, is they're testing out this program to see how well it'll work, how well how we can do this going over the crypto, going over the blockchain rails to be able to process and settle payments rather than having to use the old banking rails or having to use the old banking pipelines. Okay, so that's why this was pretty revolutionary and pretty important. Okay, what it means overall is more and more Companies at first that are looking to settle transactions using cryptocurrency, especially using US dollar coin, USDC, are going to be able to do it. It's revolutionary because there are companies that have, you know, in, that, that are international, and this would be so much easier than having to convert from dollars to euro to yen to, to whatever other currency. They can just make the payment using cryptocurrency, and if everyone's good with it, along the way and Visa can settle in that currency, we don't have to have a lot of transactions along the way. We don't have to have a lot of going from crypto to fiat and back to crypto and such. So we, we can go direct USDC to USDC or direct USDC to Visa who will, who will then help settle up. That is why this is so important because it takes this idea of more participation. It takes the idea of being able to to utilize crypto, utilize blockchain, the 24-7, 365 international nature of it and be able to facilitate payments, which is really what it was invented to do, but use Visa, which we already know, that, that system, the terminals, the cards, all of that that we already know, use that system, that network, but, but utilize Ethereum or utilize a public blockchain, utilize cryptocurrency. Okay, which is something that so many more people in the world are getting involved with because maybe they, they don't want to use their own home currency. Maybe they don't want to use their own fiat currency. Okay, so that's why this was monumental. It was really important, even though it was a really small step. It is a, it is a, a huge indication of what's to come. So we want to congratulate, of course, the, the folks we know over at Anchorage and Visa and Crypto.com. Um, that was a big deal. It's probably coming from PayPal and Curve. It'll probably come from uh, MasterCard as well. Um, we hope you enjoy this. We hope this made uh, maybe made this news make a little more sense for you. Subscribe to the channel. Visit us at interaxisacademy.com to come learn more about crypto, blockchain, uh, investing, just how to use DeFi, all those kinds of things. Uh, and we hope to see you in the next video.